So next we're going to look at a volume application. So the, what do we even mean? It's parallel of pipette. What, what on earth does that even mean? Um, so this is sort of the three-dimensional analog of a parallelogram, if you like. So you have, say, three vectors. Let's say u, v, and w. And you want none of these vectors should lie in the same plane. So they're all, you know, in, in language of linear algebra, these vectors are independent. Okay, so u and v, they form a parallelogram. u and w also form a parallelogram. And v and w form a parallelogram, right? And, well, then we get these three parallelograms making up three sides of a, a six-sided object, which is kind of like a, a sort of wonky box, right? Um, so that side should be parallel to that one. More like that. And more like that. There we are, right? So this box shape, I know that drawing is not perfect, um, but so you have, you know, it's, it's like a rectangular box, except it's been sort of skewed on its side, right? Because these, none of these vectors are necessarily orthogonal. Um, so these two opposite faces are, are sort of in parallel planes. The front and the back are top and the bottom parallel planes. And of course, they are also parallelograms, right? This, these two sides are the same. Those two are the same. Front and back are the same. Okay. Um, that's the sort of object that you're, you're trying to find. Um, now, we want to calculate the, the volume of such a thing. And, I mean, there's, there's sort of a general principle that works here, which is that if you, um, if you think about this, you know, you have this sort of parallel, let's draw it with that bottom parallelogram kind of flat. And, and we're going to go up and say across, something like this, right? Um, There we go. Um, if you kind of, if you cut this anywhere along the way, you kind of like go, say, here, right? Um, each of those slices is, is going to be another copy of that parallelogram at the bottom. And so we kind of, you know, stack of parallelograms. And, and when you do that, the, the volume of this thing is just going to be the sort of area of the base times the times the height. Okay, and so you say, well, what is the, what is the height? Well, let's see. We can kind of see the height here. H, like so. Um, and if this angle is theta, so is this angle. That will be, say, theta. All right, so that's like U, V, W there, let's say, right? And, and so the, the height, as I've got it, the height will be like the magnitude of V times, or sorry, W, I guess that's W. Magnitude of W times sine theta, right? Um, and then the, the area of the base, well, that's going to be just the cross product of, of U and V. Um, and, and so there, there are some ways to play around with this, but it turns out, and we're not going to go through the, the full derivation, it's a bit of a pain. Um, actually, we could also work it out in terms of, of this angle. We can get a cosine in there, because we do want to get a dot product to show up somewhere along the way. Um, and that angle there is going to be... Uh, right, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, this vector here is actually, this vector here is actually, and, and there's a bit of work to kind of figure this out, um, but 
that's going to be the cross product, u, u cross v, right? That's going to be the cross product. Um, and then we want to kind of get the height, which is going to involve essentially dotting with w, right? Um, and, and so what we're going to get is u cross v dotted with w. Um, I know. Sorry, I know that was not super convincing. Um, you can take my word for it if you want. Uh, or you can try to work it out yourself. That is going to be the, this u cross v and then dotted with w. Uh, the only thing you got to worry about here is that uh, I've drawn the vectors to sort of fit into this right-hand rule, so this should come out to be a positive quantity. Um, but if you're just handed these three vectors in a particular order, there's no way of knowing whether they've been written down in an order that fits to that right-hand rule. I mean, you could draw them and try to work this out, or you just drop in an absolute value, because the worst thing that happens is, you know, if they're in the wrong order, that's like swapping u and v, you know, that gets you a minus sign. And so you just put the absolute value in there. So if the minus sign shows up, absolute value is going to deal with it. Okay, great. So we can do it like that. Now you can also, if you want, because we had this as a property earlier, you could also do this as u dotted with v cross w. And it's up to you. Whichever way you want to do it, you'll get the same answer with either order. Okay. So well, why don't we do the first way? I think the book does it that way, so I'll do it the other way. You can compare the two and see that you get the same answer. Um, when we do u cross v, Okay, so we have i, j, k. We've got 1, 1, 0, minus 1, 1, 0. Uh, again, we got the pair of zeros in the third column, so we know right away that all we're going to get is a k component, and it's going to be 1 plus 1, so it's just 2k. It's one that we can actually do kind of fast, which is nice. Um, and so then the, the volume should be the cross product which is now 2k dotted with 0, 1, 1. All right, so j plus k, if you want to write it that way. Um, when you're taking dot products, dot products of different unit vectors are, are 0. So we're just going to get 2k dotted with k. We get a volume of 2. All right, that's not so bad. Um, by the way, the other way you can, you can do this is um, you can also write the volume, for those of you that have, if you've sort of seen this before, you can take all three vectors and you can arrange them in sort of this three by three array known as a determinant. We've kind of mentioned that word previously. And you can put them like that and you can expand and there are various methods for expanding that determinant and again you can work out that yes indeed um, you do get the value of 2 for that volume. 